everyone this is haimaati working as an assistant professor in the department of humanities and science mlr institute of technology so in the last session we discussed about newton's law of cooling so that is one of the application of first order and first degree differential equation so today in this session we are going to be discuss what is the statement of the law of natural growth or decay and we'll do one problem on using of law of natural growth or decay so and this is the law of natural growth of decay is the another application of first order first degree differential equations so and now let us see what is the statement of law of natural growth or decay so see the statement the rate of change of substance is proportional to the amount of the substance available at that time so that means here whatever may be the substance so that substance is depends on the time so now we are taking the substance as x and the rate of change of a substance rate of change of a substance is nothing but dx by dt so a is proportional to the amount substance available at that time so that means dx by dt is proportional to x is the equation mathematically we got here so now we will see the different cases was exist here so what are the two different cases so one is the growth and another one is the decay so for growth so as t increases x increases so we can take the proportionality constant as a positive that means the now of the equation is dx by dt is equal to k into x and as x decreases and t increases so you have to take the proportionality constant is minus k so that is dx by dt is equal to minus kx is the first order first degree differential equations and this case 2 is for dk so for dk you have to take the proportionality constant is minus k so why we are taking the minus k is if u is the amount of the material at any time t so we are here we are taking the dk is nothing but the here the x is decreases so that you have to take the proportionality constant is minus k so by taking the minus k and now the first order first degree differential equation is nothing but du by dt is equal to minus k into u so for growth here we have the equation is dx by dt is equal to kx is the first order first degree differential equation so after solving this first order first degree differential equations so you have to use the variable separable method and then integrate so we will get x is equal to c into e power kt so x is equal to c into e power kt is the equation we will get for dk so du by dt is equal to minus ku and this is the first order first degree differential equation so after solving this will gives u is equal to c into e power minus kt so this is the equation exist so and this equation gives uh, u when the time is given right the and the previous equation gives so if uh, we have to find out the x when the time is given and now let us see one example on law of natural growth or decay so see the problem the number n of bacteria in a culture grave at a rate proportional to n so here the bacteria number of bacteria is denoted by capital n 
the bacteria is denoted by capital N, right? So, by the Newton's, sorry, by the law of natural growth or decay, so this can be taken as dN by dt is proportional to capital N. So, obviously, the bacteria is always it increases and that bacteria increasing is also depends on the time. When the time increases, the bacteria is also increases. So, that you have to take the formula for growth. dN by dt is proportional to n by law of natural growth and you have to take the proportionality constant is positive k. So, and this is implies dN by dt is equal to k into n. And now, separate the variables here. So, dN by n is equal to k into dt. By integrating on both sides, integral dn by n is equal to integral k into dt plus the constant as you have to take it as the log c. And now integrating of 1 by n is a log n and k is a constant integral dt is t plus log c and you have to bring log c to the left side. So, it will give the log n minus log c is equal to kt. And log a minus log b, we have the formula, use that. Uh, and here the log n minus uh, log c is uh, log of n by c is equal to k into t. So, and now you have to bring this logarithm to the right side. So, it will give n by c is equal to e power kt and this implies n is equal to c into kt. So, this will give the number of bacteria when the time was given, right. So, see the problem again once the value of n was initially 100. So, initially 100 means initially you have to take the time is equal to 0. At that time, what is the bacteria? So, bacteria n is equal to 100 and increase to 332 in 1 hour. So, here the time I am taking in hours only. So, t is equal to 1 hour at 1 hour the bacteria is 332. The bacteria is increases to 332 and now what value we have to find out from the given statement is, so what is the value of n? That means you have to find the value of n after one and half hour. So t is equal to one and half hour. So right now we will see the solution of this. So initially, the time t is equal to 0. At that time, the bacteria is 100. Right now, you have to substitute in the formula that is n is equal to c into e power kt. So, now substitute t is equal to 0 and n is equal to 100 in this equation and now we will get the constant c value. So, substitute n is equal to 100 and c into e power k into the time t is equal to 0. So, e power k into 0 is nothing but e power 0, e power 0 is 1, so that the value of c is 1. And again, the c value you have to substitute in the first equation, then after that we will get n is equal to 100 into e power kt then again assume you have to take this equation is 2. Then now what are the another conditions was given in the statement. So, when the time is 1 hour, the bacteria is increases to 332. So, and again these two values you have to substitute in the second equation that is 332 is equal to 100 into e power k into 1. 
then now you have to bring this 100 to left side 332 by 100 is equal to e power k and now you have to find out the what is the k value and bring this exponential to the left side that exponential is turns to the logarithm so the now k is equal to log 332 by 100 so this is the value of k and again this k value you have to substitute in equation 2 so therefore the now the equation n is equal to 100 into e power k value is log of 332 by 100 into t. So again you have to assume this equation is 3. And now what we have to find out from the statement is you have to find out the bacteria n when the time is 1 and a half hour. So, this one and a half hour, we can also write this as 3 by 2 hour. This means when the time is equal to 3 by 2 hour, at that time we have to find the bacteria n and substitute this t value in the third equation. Then now we will get the how much bacteria was increased at that time t is equal to 3 by 2 hour. So, now substitute in the third equation. So, n is equal to 100 into e power log of 332 by 100 into t is 3 by 2. This can also be written as 100 into e power 3 by 2 into log of 332 by 100. So, now this is in the form of b into log a. This b log a can be taken as log of a to the power b. And 100 into e power log of 332 by 100 whole power 3 by 2. This 3 by 2 is comes under the power of 332 by 100. So, now e power we know that e power log x is x. So, that 100 into 332 by 100 whole power 3 by 2. Uh, the since e power log x is x. So, that formula we used here 100 into 332 by 100 whole power 3 by 2. So, this is the value of n. So, this value is approximately 604.9. Uh, then you have to take this as the n is 605. So, see here the bacteria was increased to 605 when the time is 3 by 2 hour. So, this is the way to solve the problem when the given problem is belongs to the growth and if it is the decay, decay means you have to take the formula is n is equal to c into e power minus kt or x is equal to c into e power minus kt. Right, this is the formula for the decay and the formula for the growth is n is equal to c into e power kt. Right, in the today's session, we discussed about the statement of law of natural growth or decay and we did one problem on this application. So, here this is the another application of the first order first degree differential equations. 
So, in the next session, we will discuss the higher order differential equations. So, higher order differential equations and also we will see that then how can we find out the solutions of higher order differential equations in the next session. That is all for the today's session. Thank you.